Okay, so we're here with Simon from Cadence Bike Fit Expert, and Simon's going to be answering some of the questions that you sent us. We've got lots and lots, so hopefully Simon can work his way through them in no time at all. Okay, let's go. So Simon, first question. This is from Row Your Boat. And his question is, what should I adjust to stop knee pain in the front outer slash top part of my knee? Front outer top part. Mm -hmm. I mean, central knee pain is normally because the knee is too flexed. So the point at which your knee is most flexed on a bike is normally just where you start to push hard on the pedals. Um, so typically you would put the saddle either up a bit or back a bit. So that's saddle, a, that's a simple up, answer, yeah. Back. Yeah, okay. typically. Um, slight, not quite 100% on the location there, but um, yeah, those would be, that would be the simple way of looking at it. Sure, okay. Next question from Ikman Singh, and his uh, question is, if the bike size is bigger for me and I haven't changed the stem or anything, will my back hurt? It did on the first ride on my bike. Probably yes. Probably yeah. yes. I mean, the first ride, depending on what the rider is used to, um, isn't necessarily indicative of how it's going to pan out. You know, so for example, sometimes after a rider's had a, a bike fit, they might get a little bit of not pain. You should never ride with pain, but yeah. you know, the, it'll, it'll stretch the ligaments in the back a little bit different. So you can expect that sort of thing initially, but it should settle down pretty quickly. If it doesn't, or it becomes genuinely painful, then yeah, you need to do something about it. Okay, excellent. So the next one is from KZ, KZLIN, KZLIN, I think that's how you say it. What is the best saddle position for a rider who has a very long stem and is very far forward? Is it better to have the nose tilted downwards or still level? Well, <laughs> it's difficult. It sounds just you just need a bike fit. Yeah. You know, you need to address the excessive reach of the bike. You know, an excessive reach to the bike will bring your, you know, tilt your pelvis further forward. So that then implies that you've got to have more of a nose down position from the saddle. But really all you're doing there is just trying to cover up something that's inherently wrong. Yeah. So generally speaking, you know, saddles are flat. Gravity only works in one direction. So a flat saddle is going to be more supportive than one with an adverse angle to it. Um, so you would, I guess you, you would typically say, actually you want a flat saddle. You don't want to be making up for other problems. It right, sounds okay. like the guy, that guy just needs a bike. So KZ Len, get a bike fit. Pretty much. Yeah, deal with those other issues. Okay, next one is from Andy Paling. This is a tough one, Simon. What is considered the most important measurement in a bike fit? Um, it's not that tough, really. Not that tough. No, it'd be the knee angle, knee angle <laughs> extension. The knee angle. Yeah. So what, when we talk about knee angle, we're talking about whether or not it's fully extended or? Just the range that your knee goes through. Um, you know, you could also apply that to, uh, you know, so for example, when the pedal is in the forward position, mm -hmm. it's pretty much when you're able to apply the most weight to it. Yep. So again, you can, uh, you can examine the validity of that position by another knee angle, mm -hmm. which is kind of in between the extended and the flexed position. Sure. So yeah, knee angle extension. Knee angle, simple. Okay, the next one we have Victoria, and she said, oh, a bit, a bit, a bit technical this one. Let's see if we can, we can get this, Simon. I've always used a 172.5 crank, crank set length, but the Bianchi I bought came with a 165. After a bike fit, I felt great on my bike, but wonder if I should go back to my old measurements. How could a crank set length affect my power? Um. Okay, so, well, the first question, no, you probably shouldn't go back to the 172. I mean, unless she's a very tall lady, yeah. you wouldn't normally warrant a crank arm that long. Mm. Um, crank arm length is something that I, I, I wouldn't normally, um, it'd be very unusual for me to say your crank arm length is wrong. You know, for every rule that exists to, est to establish the ideal crank arm length for a rider, there's plenty of people who are managing to ignore that rule and get on quite comfortably. In the case of a rider who's quite short, the danger is a long crank arm will mean the difference between the extended position and the flexed position in terms of the knee angle will be more. Right. Um, <clears throat> you, you know, the way you would choose a crank arm length is a longer crank arm is suitable for lower revs, lower speed pedaling. So for mountain biking, I use a 175. Um, uh, a shorter crank arm length is a smaller circle mm -hmm. to move your feet through. So it generally works better for high speed pedaling. So if you're on a fixie or a track bike, I use a 170 crank arm length. 
um, and then 172 and a half is road bike kind of in between. Um, so I would probably say if she's bought a brand new bike that comes with a 165 crank arm length on it, it's probably a fairly small bike and it's probably quite suitable for her. Suitable. For her so that's, that's quite interesting then. So the principle is that you want a longer crank if you're for the slower revolutions. For more leverage, yeah, more yeah. mechanical advantage from the longer lever, but then it's a bigger circle to move your feet in. Right. So that can cause you issue. You know, you'd be, you'd be flexing your knee more, you'd be flexing your hip more. All these things would be exaggerated. So actually a lot of the try guys are going towards quite short cranks now because obviously they've got to run when they get off the bike, so they don't yeah. want to flex the hip too much. Okay, interesting, interesting. Uh, so next one, this is from Omar Khalid. He says, I'm 16 and I should ride a 56 frame, but I, ride a, but I have a 58 and my lower back is starting to hurt. What should I do? If you've got a bike that's one size wrong, mm -hmm. so if this guy's saying he needs a 56, he's mm -hmm. probably about 5'11", yeah. as a kind of middle range. Um, if the bike is one size wrong, you can normally make it work, or I can normally make it work. You know, it would have a fairly short stem, it would probably have a low bar. Sure. Um, the saddle would be a bit lower than what the manufacturer anticipated. So you can normally change these things. Um, general rule for this particular person, if we assume that his saddle height is correct, because of course incorrect saddle height can cause back problems, if we assume that's okay, he needs to lower the bars and bring them closer. Okay, lower bars and bring them closer. Yeah. Luke Houghton, he says, how do I know if my cleats are in the best possible position? Um, it's a good question. I mean, I, I guess, you, you know, that makes me think if you were to expand that question and say, how do I know my bike fit is the best possible fit? Yeah. Well, you don't until you've got the best possible fit and then, you know, you don't want to go back to it. So, I mean, you could say there'd be things like telltale signs that there's a problem is you know, some certain types of knee pain um, would affect, uh, would be uh, addressed by cleat position, foot yeah. pain as well. Um, so pain are the signs. Yeah, that pain, it's out. pains are the signs. Or, you know, you recall having a setup previously that seemed to work a lot better. Yeah. And somehow you've moved away from that. Okay. And what about, um, some people say, don't they, that the, the cleats, the balls of your feet should be centered over the pedal axle? Yeah, is that I mean, broadly? Yeah, right? yeah, pretty much. I mean, you've got the you've got the first bone of the big toe, the first metatarsal head, yeah. and the fifth metatarsal head. They're normally offset at an angle. So what you would generally be aiming to do is have the axle position of the pedal halfway between those two points, oh, I see. or no further forward than halfway. Further back generally works okay, um, and there'd be a little mark on the cleat to tell you where the axle yes. position is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so you could check out that or, yeah, or pain or discomfort of some sort. Okay, cool. Uh, next one is from UT Zock. That's not right, <laughs> but best way to adjust uh, the saddle setback. So I think what they're talking about there is fore and aft on the saddle. Yeah. That, what, what determines the best, best position there? Uh, it's a tricky one, tricky to one. be honest. You know, the main thing I would be looking at is how that affects um, the knee angle when the pedal is in the forward position, so that yeah. sort of peak force position of the pedal stroke, um, and then also how it affects the rider's overall centre of gravity. So those are fairly difficult things to determine on your own. Mm -hmm. Obviously I've got a practiced eye and some electronics to help me out with that. Yeah. Um, I would probably say, you know, for somebody doing it at home, use the old plumb bob method off the front of the, off the, front yes, of the yeah, tibial yes, tuberosity. Yes. So that's where you, you have a weighted piece of string essentially and you just put it on the top, yeah. just in front, you're so on your knee. Pedal, cap, normally pedal's in the forward position and you're clipped in on it. You've got your normal foot angle. Yeah. You hold a plumb bob off the tibial tuberosity, which is the lump on the tibia there, yeah. and that should pretty much intersect the axle of the pedal. Yes. That's a kind of, you know, I like to think I employ a slightly more sophisticated method, but that's, that's the basic way of doing it. Okay, very good. Um, so that's cleat position. This is an interesting one. So this is from Sharindi, and he or she says, what is the best angle of your back when you're resting on the hoods? Um, well, it depends you know, how aggressive your riding position is. If you're doing racing, then you probably go, 
Well, back angle is a little bit tricky because normally your back isn't flat, it's curved a little bit. So if we assume back angle is a line between your hip and your shoulder from horizontal, um, typical angle for say a sportive rider would be maybe 48 degrees yep. from horizontal. Uh, for somebody who's doing more aggressive racing, you might go down towards sort of 44, 42, something like that. So it's interesting because earlier Simon uh, was saying that it's a common misconception that your back should be sort of really straight from the pelvis upwards, I guess. It, it's more a case of getting the pelvis as upright as you can and then just a slight, slight curve, right? Yeah, yeah. To, I would describe it as a gentle curve. You know, it's relaxed. You've got tension on the, on the fascia in your lower back and on the posterior spinal ligaments. Yeah. Um, it's comfortable. It means you're not really using these back extensors. You just, you know, the first bit of tension is in your glutes. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, you could argue there's a little bit more to it than that. And of course, then it's further complicated by, well, you've got back angle, but then you've got shoulder position and so forth. You know, your shoulders extended forward, hunched up. Sure. Um, starts to get a bit more complicated. Okay, okay, next one is from Brick City Marco. Yeah. And he says, what's the most common cause for knit neck pain slash stiffness? Um, well, if we ignore kind of um, pre-existing problems that a yeah. rider might have, um, the bars are too far away. Bars too far yeah. away. So you end up with, you know, too much reach. It puts too much weight on your hands. Therefore, you end up doing too much work with your arms and shoulders. If it's making your elbows lock out, then that transmits more shock to you or through the whole of your arms. So the solution there is a, a shorter stem probably, is it? Yeah, right? probably a shorter stem, you know, centre of gravity moved back a little bit, um, a consciously a more relaxed position in the arms and shoulders if the fit allows you to do that. Okay, and Ernest Koo, he says, I just measured my cops on my bike, but now I have lower back pain. Do I need to use a longer stem? So COPS is a method, a sort of bike fit method, right? COPS is K-O-P, knee over pedal. So what yeah. we were talking about earlier with the plum bob, that would be a, that would be a rule that, um, uh, you know, subscribes to the COPS rule, um, which is, as I say, is quite an old rule. Um, so I didn't quite understand the train of logic in that question. So I measured my COPS, so yeah. presumably, but now I have lower back pain. I wouldn't Do relate I... those two issues ordinarily. So it so. seems like... He needs a bike fit. Seems like you need a bike fit, Ernest. <laughs> so he's got lower back pain. I mean, that would apply to what I was talking about earlier. You know, if the reach is too far yeah. um, or it's too aggressive, you know, too much of an acute hip angle trying to happen there. Um, in terms of the cops, yeah, it would kind of relate in terms of how any figure relates to the balance of the whole position, but not directly. Yeah. Okay. And the final one is actually from myself. Mm. And that was just how important is uh, pedal float. Pedal float, it's it, the most important thing is that you've got some. Right. You know, so years ago, um, clipping, uh, sorry, clips and straps, and then they converted in the 80s, I think, to a clipless style of pedal um, that had no float in it. So everybody got sore knees because when you're riding, you rotate your foot two or three degrees normally, yeah. provided you've got two or three degrees float in your cleats, which most medium float cleats have. Um, that should be enough to accommodate that natural movement. Okay. If you want to use more and you're comfortable with it, that's fine. Don't use the zero degree float cleats. That would be my main bit of advice. Don't use the zero degrees. Yeah, yeah, you want a little bit of movement there. Excellent. All right. So I think that's all our questions answered. Thank you very much to Simon at Cadence.